Hi, and welcome to this new episode. Now, you might be wondering what this tool called GarageBand exactly is and how you can use it to record yourself when singing. So in this episode, I've got you covered with a complete overview, a beginner's guide to GarageBand so that you can get started recording your vocals with that tool. Let's dive into it. Hi, my name is Maggie. I'm the founder of The Singing Insiders, in which I help passionate singers just like yourself become the best versions of themselves through what they love doing the most, which is hopefully, if you're here, singing. And in these episodes, you're going to get practical tools, techniques, insights, everything that you need to up-level your singing skills. So let's take a look at what this tool called GarageBand exactly is is let me take you behind the scenes um, on my computer. So when you first open up GarageBand, this is what you probably see. And the aim of today's episode is just to walk you through the interface so that you have the basics, that you understand what everything is doing in this software. And then we're actually going to put it into practice where we're going to import a karaoke track and put a track, select a track so that you can actually record your own vocals. So the first thing that you see when you are um, logging into GarageBand or, or starting GarageBand is this option here. So this software instrument option is if you have, for example, a keyboard that you can plug into your computer and uh, you want to use MIDI to um, input songs, that's what you can use. Um, now, most singers that I work with, they only uh, work with karaoke tracks. So a backing track, for example, you can get that from different websites where, that you can download them from. Um, and so if you have that, then you would want to choose an audio track type. So uh, you can click on record using a microphone um, or drag and drop audio files. That's the one that we want to have. Um, if you do play guitar or you have, you know, any any other plugs that you can uh, connect to your computer, then this would be the audio track that you're using. And the drummer track, we're going to talk about that later. Uh, so for now, I'm going to select this one. And it's really important to uh, choose your input as well. Um, so here we have two options, no input or input one. Now, depending on what you have um, <clears throat> connected to your computer, you might see different inputs there. So for example, I'm talking now into this mic, which is connected to my focus, right? And again, we can, we're not going to go into that world of what is a perfect setup. Um, we will in, in future episodes. Um, but depending on what you have connected to your uh, computer, you might see different inputs here. Um, so here you can see that the microphone selected is the MacBook Pro microphone, which is my um, my microphone, but here you can see the Scarlett 2i2, which is the microphone that I'm speaking into um, right here, this one. So once I've created the, um, or once I've selected the microphone that I want to be singing in, I can go ahead and hit create to uh, create the actual track. So as you can see, that is where my track has been selected and created. So we're first going to do a little walkthrough of like the main interface, because again, this is a beginner's guide. Um, then moving on, we'll actually be going through the process of how you can record yourself um, within this platform. So the first thing that we're looking at is this main area right here, which is where all of your tracks will be hosted. So if you have a karaoke backing track, for example, that will be one track. If you have then your own vocals, that will be a separate track. If you then have other instruments uh, playing, that would all be their own track. So the idea here is that every instrument or every input has their own track in GarageBand. Let's look at the top part right here. So we have a couple of things here. Um, obviously, this is to stop, this is to start, and this is to record yourself, this red little button. You can also press R on your keyboard, and this is um, like to loop a certain section of the song. 
Um, here, this is where beautiful things happen. <laughs> you can change the view, but basically here you can see that we're on bar one. If I move here with my cursor, you can see that that jumps to bar two. So it's basically telling you where you're at within your project and then what beat that you're on. Here you can change the tempo. Um, I love that you can adjust it to whatever you like. I can go into 120 BPM. I can go back to 90 if I want to. Um, then we have the key of the song. You can change that key signature to anything you like. And then the time signature as well. You can go to 4-4 four, four or 3-4 or whatever the song is that you're working with. Uh, you can also change this view. If you don't want to see all of that information, you can change it to just the beats and the time or just the beats or just the time. So you can make it simpler if that's um, what you want. But I like to view the whole entire project. That's basically um, what's happening here on the top bar. Here too, uh, the one, two, three is basically if you turn that in, turn that on, that's a count in where the system will count off for you before it starts the recording. And this is basically to add the click track or the metronome, like the tick, 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 tick so that you stay consistently in the time of, um, of your, of your, um, of your thing, right? Uh, of your song. That's the word I was looking for. Okay, moving on. On the left hand side here, the library has opened up. You can open and close that by clicking this little button right here. And in the library, it's basically um, presets that uh, they have put there for you. So I have selected an audio track. If I'm recording vocals, I can go into voice and then select any of these to basically have pre-selected sounds. That's what you can um, compare it to. So if you're watching those little knobs here down at the bottom, you can see that they will change depending on which um, presets I'm selecting. Do you see? So I love the preset of the natural voice if I'm recording voice. So if I'm recording myself, I will always hit natural voice because those presets are pretty good in my opinion. Then obviously you can always uh, play with them and change them here if you want to. Um, but this is basically, if you would be singing live, many singers, they like to have a little bit of reverb on their voices or maybe they want to boost the, the higher frequencies or the lower frequencies to have a little bit more warmth and depth in their song. And so this is basically what is happening when you're doing that digitally um, in GarageBand. Again, it's asking me to use something I don't want to use. <laughs> So that's the basic overview uh, here on the left, by the way, the recording settings, you can again choose your input and uh, the monitoring, which is a great feature. Uh, if you turn that on, you're not going to do that because that will give me feedback. But if you turn that on, that will basically make sure that when you're recording and you're using your headphones, the output is selected to the headphones and you can hear the music playing. If you put the monitoring on, you can also hear yourself, your own voice through the microphone in your headphones. So that's always interesting. Um, okay, if you have found value, by the way, so far, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, subscribe to the podcast, wherever you're tuning in from, so that you're keeping updated for episodes like this one coming up in the future. Now, the most important thing is actually coming up, which is how do you record yourself? Like what's the basic setup if you want to make a recording of your voice? So let's walk through that together. Uh, no, I don't want to use that. Okay. So the first thing is that we want to import our karaoke um, file. So I have my file right here. You Raise Me Up backing, which is a karaoke track of You Raise Me Up that I have made in the past. And as you can hear, my metronome or my click track is not aligned to the project. So there's two options here. You can either turn it off or you can change the tempo of the project right here, depending on what the BPM is of your track. I like to just turn it off because oftentimes there's a drum and everything in the backing track. So then I don't need to have that click track all the time playing. 
Uh, so I like to turn that off. So we have imported our backing track by just dragging it in the project. Um, now we're going to import or create a second track. So I'm going to hit the plus button. I'm going to hit the audio track for, and I'm going to hit create. Um, and this opens up this second track. This will be my vocals. So because I'm going to record vocals, I'm going into voice and I love the natural vocal presets. Now I invite you to play with the other ones to see which one fits you the best. Um, but I just love that one. And then the only thing that we can do is start and hit record. And that's where we can start recording ourselves. And as you can see, this is, um, it's, this is me talking. This is me talking. Now, if I'm singing, oh, it's creating this. Now, one important thing to note here, when you're recording yourself, you don't want to go into overdrive. What is overdrive? It's when my microphone is turned all the way up and this green bar would go into the red. We don't want to have that happen. So to avoid that, what I like to do before I record myself is actually take the loudest part of the song and sing it as if I would sing it when I'm recording the whole song. So for example, here it would be, you raise me up. Okay, that would be the, the, like the loudest part. And I'm seeing that my bar here stays green, which means we're good. If that bar would go into orange or red, that means we're in overdrive. And then I need to turn down the gain of the microphone. Um, I can do that on the focus ride, depending on how your microphone is set up. It might be on the microphone itself. It depends from mic to mic. So turning down the gain is really important because once you record with overdrive, there's no way to take that away. Does that make sense? So we need to make sure we are recording in a good way before, like test it out. Don't go into overdrive before you hit the record button is basically what I'm saying. Okay, so imagine that we've singing this whole song. Next, we need to export it, export this project to an actual file. For that, I'm going to hit the cycle range and you make sure that it's all the way till the end of the project. Now, as you can see here, it's a little bit longer. If I would leave it in here, that means that when I'm exporting this, the system will take this silence in my file as well. So the song would be finished and then there will be maybe 30 seconds more of nothing. We don't want to have that. So I'm going to trim it down till the end of the song right here and then we can export it. Um, how we're going to export it is hitting share and then click song to music. That will open up a new screen and here you can give it whatever title you want. You raise me up, cover, Maggie cover, um, share. That will export the song and then you should be able to find that in your uh, files on your computer. Um, as you can see, Mac can automatically, automatically opens up iTunes and creates a playlist called GarageBand where you can find all of your covers so far. And this is basically the one that we have just created. Um, so there you have it. This is a basic overview of how you can record yourself in GarageBand. Now, important disclaimer. When you're recording yourself, obviously you want, you, you want yourself to sound good, right? That's the aim that many of us as singers have. What I would suggest for you is to work on your vocal technique to get to a place where you don't have to tweak too much um, with the software to make your voice sound nice. Because yes, there's so many things available to you now to tweak your voice. Um, but we want your voice to sound good. So the right type of vocal training is one of the most important elements within your singing journey. And one of the most important vocal techniques to really master is your mixed voice technique. 
So I have linked up a video for you all about that technique so that you can get started with that. Uh, this really takes this conversation to a whole new level. I will also link to it in the description here down below. And my invitation to you would be to go watch that episode once you have finished with this one. So I will see you there so that we can get started and working on improving your voice. And um, if I don't see you there, then I will hopefully see you here again for uh, the episode next week. So talk to you then. Bye.